It's the time of the day. Please don't be late. Call your friends or call my friends. Let's go and be changed. TMP is doing the most. TMP is doing the most. It's the time of the day. Please don't be late. Call your friends or call my friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Miracle Perspective. And today I've got with me this very wonderful and beautiful friend of mine <laughs> <laughs> i met her last year closer to the end of the year no it was no, june 16 it was june actually 16. wow it's been that long yes yes i'm celebrating one year in june 16. oh wow but my birthday is coming up as well next 16. month yes all right <laughs> so she just gave me a task guys in front of everybody but <laughs> happy birthday in advance i did say that in front of everybody as well and <laughs> it does not absolve him from saying happy wow. birthday to me on my birthday and also getting me a gift. And this is how we start in this interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me welcome to the Miracle Perspective. Thank you. I'm so honored to have you today. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for, you know, creating this platform as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you invited me about a month ago at your own platform and I want everybody to check it out because it's really dope, it was amazing and I'm happy that I was the first guest at that as well. <laughs> so uh, I'm happy and I've wanted to have you here, I've always wanted to have you here. You just beat me to it. You called me at yours before I called you at mine. But here we are. <laughs> and the reason why I called you here today is because I want to get to know you and I want the world and people to know you because you are greatness. Oh, you, are, you are amazing. When I met you there, and we briefly got to know each other mm. and we exchanged contacts we started talking yeah and i got a little bit of your background mm. but i was like no we need to properly sit down let me get to know you and let the world know who they is. so give us a mini introduction all right give us an introduction okay miracle so thank you once again uh, for creating this platform my name is i am uh, a mom Number one, mm -hmm. um, to a beautiful, vibrant. She, she just author. jumped now. Yeah, she just jumped now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's actually saying no. Yeah. Like cut, cut that me out. Fine. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. So I'm, I'm a mom to a beautiful, vibrant, ten-year-old girl. Um, I'm a marketing academic, so I lecture in marketing modules at the Tony University of Technology. I'm an NLP life coach and practitioner, and I'm taking it a notch up next week. Mm. With the master practitioner. Oh wow! Yes, look at you. I am. Look so at you. I'm in that journey. Um, what else? Oh, I love life, and I live for a living. When people ask me what do you do for a living, I live for a living, meaning that I make sure that I, I do my best and I live my best life. I love looking good. So his friend, um, Les, who was on the first episode, I think it was that last week. Or yes, week, yes. He just said I'm an image consultant, so I'm receiving it. <laughs> oh wow so that just came from that show yeah he just it said, was him manifesting it yes it. he just said no she's also an image consultant and i'm like yeah hmm? okay i'll become one <laughs> i am now i am now and then what else so i'm um, i'm a daughter i'm a mother i'm a sister i'm a friend i'm a mistress ne? what what's that i'm a mistress what's a mistress a mistress is somebody that teaches oh why do you call it that instead of educator? No, uh, I'm a mistress. But you did say you're a lecturer. Yes, I am so a lecturer. So I'm, I'm, I'm just interested in the emphasis on a mistress. Why? I can I put a colon in your German mistress. Oh. Yes. So you wanted to take it back in. <laughs> I had to. I had to. So I'm a mistress. And yeah, this is me. Um, how old am I? I'm 36 years old. Imagine. 37. Imagine. Yes. <laughs> wow. 36 years old, 2037 on the 16th of February. So please, please, I please will appreciate the love because I like things and I love love. <laughs> and yeah, we did say happy me. birthday. So I think I've I've done my part so far. So it's a gift that's coming. It will come. Yeah, and I'm going to I'm, I'm going to be on your neck. I, have... I know it's yeah. fine. I will I'll make it happen. I'll find someone to help me to get you the perfect gift because myself I know she's. So I'll get somebody, but I'll get the daughter. She'll 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 help me get the right gift. <laughs> trust her, trust her. Anyways, so <clears throat> we we've been having quite a number of discussions, and I like your mind. I like the way you think. I like the way you view the world. Mm -hmm. 
and I was like, let me just come and pick on you. Ooh. Let me let me understand your journey. Let me understand what made you the person that you are today. You you did mention that you are a lecturer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when did that start? So that started back in 2011. I started lecturing um, just before I graduated for my BTEC in marketing. Mm -hmm. um, because they asked me to step in. I was working as a research assistant. And then also the marketing assistant at one of the divisions in the university. And then they said, no, step in, come in as a lecturer. And it's been a show. It's been a show. It's 2011. What, 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 what made them select you? Because I'm clever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it happened. I'm how clever. the orchestration happened. Um, I was, okay, so, uh, not, a, not that I was a top student. Yeah. But in certain modules, I was a top student. So you were studying there at UT? Yes. TUT. So the people that I'm currently working with were my lecturers. Interesting. Yes, so that's how it manifested. I didn't think I'd ever end up in academia, mm -hmm. but clearly God's plan for me was to put me mm -hmm. in academia to empower people, to educate and to ignite. And I've always had a passion for teaching. I remember when we were small, so I'm a, I'm the middle child like him. <laughs> so when we were small, and my younger sister, we used to always play teddy bear school. Okay. So we would line up all those teddy bears and then teach them. Mm -hmm. Right, and then imagine <clears throat> writing out the notes for the teddy bears and then marking the notes, you know. Wow. So we do that, and then um, I remember one day we got into trouble because we used my older sister's accounting book, <laughs> and she was livid. <laughs> she was livid because that was like the school book. Wow. Yeah, but so the passion for teaching literally was, I think it's genetic because my mom is, is well, a retired professor academic as well. My dad was an educator and a lecturer at some point. Um, my grandmothers were teachers. Mm -hmm. My great grandfather was a teacher wow. as well. So it's I think it's, it's just inevitable. genetic, yeah. It's it's in mm -hmm. the blood, you know, and we do have a passion for teaching. Um I never thought, honestly, I never thought, even up until today I'm still like Emma I still stand in front of people students each and every single day mm. and I teach them you know and I teach them marketing I teach them advertising I teach them consumer behavior girls it's you you know <laughs> so mm. that's that but yeah so that's the academic journey um what else do you want to know like how <laughs> I'm still interested in how they selected you from this whole pool of students and they were like you know what we think you are the best candidate please come in like, what was it about you? What were you doing? And I think this can speak to someone as well who is in school in terms of their behavior. What were they doing that made, what, what were you doing that made you not so well? So when I started my diploma in marketing, mm -hmm. I was also a working student. Mm -hmm. So I was hustling. On right? campus? No, off campus. Okay. So it meant for the, I would not attend lectures all the time because... Mm -hmm. If find a student would call and say we need a receptionist for Santa, I'm I'm there, wow. and then I'll catch up on the work afterwards. If um, Fiat at some point needed a receptionist mm. or they needed someone to come and assist with one of our golf days, as an example, mm. I'm there. Mm. So it made me noticeable to my lecturers for the I was actually working. Never in class. Yes, I, I was I was in class, but I was never in class. You know, yeah. um, and then. I remember, you know, I, I've always been a student that was respectful as well mm. to my lecturers. And then I've had an interest in research. So one of my mentors, who's a research professor, um, asked me to become a research assistant um, while she was doing her PhD. Mm. And then I would do, I would help her with her data collection and everything. So obviously then they start noticing you. Mm. They not, notice your grades as well. They notice your behavior and your conduct, right? And how you show up in class and just, you know, being friendly and being being yourself. And then that's when they pulled me in to say, come in and lecture. So I made myself visible in a way. Mm. Because I'm a marketer, right? Ah, and money follows attention. Money follows attention. But also I believe the humility, being teachable and just being having a relationship with your lecturers mm. where you give them that honor as your educators mm. and then they 
give you the honor as their students. Mm. And they always believe at the university that we grow our own timber. Right. So what does that mean? meaning that we train our own future em employees. Ah, nice. And we always want to retain our students ah. instead of having to go and get new people. So that has always been a motto mm. in the department, in the university, and I happen to just be a product mm. of that. Actually, thinking about it and talking about it, it's different. What? It's, it's, you know, the thing is, and if people think, Jorge, because you, you are in the job, that's how you see it, because your energy do it day to day. But we just go to class, we lecture, we prepare, we do all these things, but you don't actually get to sit and reflect. So you're making me reflect on the, how many years now? Almost 2011. 2011. Uh, 14. 14 uh, years. 12. 12, yeah. 12 years. Jeez. That's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. So that's, that's basically the journey of being in academia and being a lecturer. And I have to say it manifested many beautiful milestones as well because I got to, I got to harness my craft in marketing. I got to build very strong relationships in industry as well with um, a lot of marketers because I always would reach out to bring industry into academia to support our students, right? I've mentored a lot of students as well. Um, I've, I've developed programs for the university in terms of mentorship program. I helped do that. Um, I sit now on the Women in Leadership Forum um, and I'm... Um, on campus. Can, yeah? On campus. On campus. Mm. And I can officially say it now because I saw that they told the vice chancellor yesterday that I'm officially the deputy chair of the, the Women in Leadership Forum. Look at you. Woo hoo. Congratulations. Thank you. Just yesterday. Yes. Wow. The email came in yesterday while I was sitting here with my family working. And actually, the past 48 hours have been amazing. Right? Mm. So the email came through and I've been, been saying that, yeah. <laughs> so the, yeah. so I've known since last year, November, no October, because we hosted a huge successful event and I ran with it. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I worked with the community with the Expo and we did everything. And keeping in mind what I was the youngest member of the Expo before. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting with all these doctors and professors. Yes, so, that's what I want to get to as well. Yeah, yeah. Sitting with them and you're the young one, mm. you know. And anyway, fine, whatever happens. So in one meeting then they were like, okay, we need a new deputy chair because the other one who's now the chair um, was deputy, but then our former chairperson stepped down. Mm -hmm. So like we need a new deputy chair and everything. and. One of the ladies who's one of my mentors was like that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> so then eventually they're all like, yes, actually. Wow. Yes, you know, you've been doing a lot. The the forum has been brought back to life since you stepped in. Wow. So why not? So I remember I was like, you guys, please, ladies, please don't do that. <laughs> but anyway, so I've always known. It's just that I did not say anything except to family mm. about it but after seeing an email being sent to the vice chancellor yesterday mm. to say that now i'm taking over as deputy chair when the new chairperson is taking over as chair now mm. i was like Ooh. Wow. now i can officially go live with it because the big man of the institution has been has made declared. away has declared mm. now knows. beautiful thank you and then um Another one is, you know, I manifested my dream job on Thursday. Okay. Yeah, through Twitter. All right, we'll get to the dream job. Yeah. So it's, but it's aligned with what I teach. The dream job. Yes. All right, before we get to the dream job, I wanted to understand how, how did you manage to get a voice in this space of professionals, older people with a lot of experience? You were just a student. We were teaching you yesterday. I was just feeding you yesterday. Now you want to come in. What do you, what do you what do you know, little child? And you also you, you also have this small body. And I mean, eleven years ago, <laughs> I can just imagine how you looked. How did you get your voice in this huge 
institution, this very high pressure institution environment, to a point where today you are recognized and they select you to be the deputy chair of this big organization? I was just true to myself. What you see is what you get. And mm -hmm. I feel I don't keep quiet. Mm -hmm. So I always have an opinion. Right? I know I, I know boundaries and stuff. Yeah. But when it came to issues affecting women, my mom always says I'm a professional feminist. That's what she calls me, but I'm like, whatever. It's okay. It's what I wonder mean. what that means. I'm a professional feminist who's always pushing women's agendas. But not at the expense of men. Okay, so that's what makes you the professional. No, because oh. I didn't mean, now it's take it's been taken up to, Yes, because now you're on women in leadership. And that's uh, a that's a feministic movement. Uh, so now I'm I, I was a feminist before, mm. but now it's professional, you know? Mm. It's professional and I'm like whatever. But I don't do it at the expense of men. That's one thing I must just declare because people when they hear the word feminism they think, oh, all feminists think men are trash. Yeah. You know, I, I don't subscribe to those, and I've gotten into trouble for not subscribing to those narratives. You should get into something else, and I'm interested in it. I yes. want us to get into that as well. Yeah. <laughs> I know, you and I, I know, like, I know. <laughs> I mean, so there's two things now. There's the, 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 the new job, the one that you manifested on Twitter. We have that on hold. We have the feminist on hold. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell us how did you... What, where were you getting this confidence from? Because, I mean, my channel is about confidence, helping people identify their, uh, get their identity and improve their self-confidence and productivity. So, with you now getting into this space, and I just want to understand, and also for many women out there who are in this corporate world, and they just feel like they're small, they're in this field where they can't have a voice. Some are in leadership and they just don't know what to say because they're this energies that are just way above them and they feel like we don't have space here how did i get the confidence i think the confidence was instilled in me through my upbringing okay i've always been a child that spoke or naughty very very naughty mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. yeah and mm -hmm. the middle child you know so obviously i think that dynamic on its own positions you mm. differently because you've got two other siblings mm. right and again, okay, for me, a person, I love astrology, I'm an Aquarius, I'm free-spirited. So I can walk into a room and just mm, be you. Be me. And if you don't like me, it's okay. You know, I, I have a voice and I've, the confidence has always been there. But now in my adult years, I feel like it's just, I've just become so fearless. Mm. I'm not scared of anyone or in okay i'm scared of snakes but I'm, i was gonna say i'm not scared of anyone in anything but i'm scared of snakes <laughs> right but um i just i'm just myself mm. and i i did not see reason why i need to shrink myself and you know um minimize myself to please other people mm. why should i not be myself why should i not be my authentic self mm. why should i not be the daughter that my parents gave birth to mm. the daughter that my parents promoted mm. the mother that my daughter appreciates mm. you know the friend that my friends embrace and love you know mm. that one that they know for the, if anything happens we know we're going to go to it because she's going to solve it mm. you know why can't i be that because of the world from a young age boxes us yeah be like this be like that don't do this don't do that a woman should be this a man mm. should be that so i don't subscribe to those norms and that's why it's easy for me to say yes the confidence is there and i know when to use it and i know how to use it and it has to always be constructive and it also has to impart and impart inspiration in other people so the confidence has always been there but i think in the university setup i've just been like i'm here and I will take up space and I'll bring the change and I'll empower my students and I will be there for my colleagues as well. And I want to see the change because we, I, I'm, I'm a person that identifies a lot of gaps. Mm -hmm. And then when I see the gaps and how do we fill them in, you know, um, and that is just something, believing in yourself and being fearless. I, I just don't, I don't subscribe to fear and mm -hmm. to limiting myself and to shrinking myself i just don't do that it's not in my nature i was never raised to and i will never do that beautiful for anyone beautiful mm. so that's that and even you know some, sometimes in meetings i sit and i just listen and observe mm. but when i 
open the gap. I open it. You know, um, I remember my, the most intimidating meeting for me was meeting Vice Chancellor for the first time last year. Oh my God. The first time? Yes, because he had just been appointed. Oh. <gasps> you know, and we are there, and none of my daughter made him a gift the night before. We painted a box for him because he likes books. So it's a book box. And then we painted it for him because I was just like, you know what? We need to leave a mark in this man's life. We need to remember the forum and the people that were in the forum. Right. So I did that on behalf of the forum with my daughter. And then following morning, got ready and went and had breakfast with him with the rest of the forum. Why? 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 Why was the 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 timidness towards him? Because of his title? His his work, his persona. That man is he's like I, when I heard that he's going to be our vice chancellor, I was like, Amen. Amen. Our savior is here. The man of stature. Yes, I because I, I've been following him on Twitter, mm. and you know I I read his work. I understand his values. Mm. So now I'm sitting like next to him. Yeah. And I was just, you know, I, I held back, but I was just myself. Low chilling. Oh yeah. Low chilling. Um hold it right there. Let's can, let's improve the light. We're back and we're live again. East Lucian Chronicles. Hey man. Oh, living sorry. in South Africa. Li living in this planet. <sighs> oh, at least he gets to experience low shading when he's with me. Wish he never gets to experience. I, I just don't know how South Africans are able to deal with this and they're all calm. It's normal for them. It's oh. like business as usual. We continue with life. And today, I'm like, how do you guys do it? Today you're a South African. Jeez, that's why you should stay home. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, before the loan shading disturbed us, you are in the vicinity or in this environment with the, chan the, vi the Chancellor, vice the Vice Chancellor. Chancellor. And you're here behaving yourself. I'm here behaving myself because I'm like taking it back. I'm sitting next to this guy. Yeah. And now everybody in the forum, they're also grounded and humbled. And, you know, and I'm just sitting there. And I had my mentee mm -hmm. who was there with us. I saw because she was assisting. Mm. And it's like, I think that's how we, we're all going to be when we meet God. <laughs> oh, wow. So is that is that... Hi, you put him at that lead. Yes, I put really? Him. Yes, I do. Wow. I do. So it was it was humbling and it was just interesting to also observe him, mm. you know, and just be around him and to read his energy and his aura. Mm. Right. And then I think my moment was when I gave him the gift. And he opened it and he loved it. Wow. Because we hand painted the gift for him and he loved it and <laughs> oh that was a smart move oh, it's like yeah you need to mark up <laughs> so anyway yes so it was a humbling experience um but it did not stop me from because we all had to introduce ourselves and our yeah. portfolios it did not stop me from being me mm. again mm. it's just that it was me in I like that like wow okay hi pinch me moment but mm. Then, then you got back to normal. I got back to normal Same and thing. I had to be myself. Mm. And I had to, you know, give reflections of the work that I was doing because mm. he had to be enlightened mm. about what each portfolio had been doing. Right. Mm. And I've been do I, I did do quite a lot of big things last year. Mm -hmm. We are pulled in the forum. You know, we we were taken to like the um, ambassador's house or go Qatar. I took them there with my wow. contacts, you know, to mm. for visibility purposes. So you have to now share those things and he's sitting there like, okay, okay, so we've been moving, you know. Mm. So it's it, it was there, it was humbling, it was reflective, it was inspiring. And it was just, it was nice, man, you know, like, because mm. it's not an opportunity that everybody gets mm. to sit on the table with people like that. Mm. You never, not everybody gets that seat at the table. Mm. The seat was given to me. Mm. Am I going to sit back and just, like, Always be, oh my God, you know, you yeah. know. That seat was given to me by design mm. to come and make a change yep. and to learn and to grow. Beautiful. Right? And I will use that seat. And while mm. I'm sitting on that table, 
I will also put up more seats on the table for other people as well. That's just my philosophy. So a person that doesn't, Beautiful. are they going to keep quiet? Hmm. You don't keep quiet. I like, I like the fact that your confidence is backed up by your achievements and successes. And that's, that's, that's where the difference in arrogance and confidence comes in. Mm. Because other people in your shoes or other people in your position, mm. thinking they are confident, they're actually arrogant. Because mm. they don't have the things to show for mm. who they are or for the position that they're holding. But in your case, you had these things that you have done in the department, the changes you've brought in the department. That's why you are even authentic when you stand and when you bring out your voice. It is mm. something that you know comes from something that backs you up. You are backed up by things. Hey there, this is Miracle TMP Jawane, the confidence coach and the author of The Five Friend University. If you're anything like me, you know you've got massive potential within yourself. You know you were created with a huge purpose. However, you're just held back by fear and the lack of confidence in yourself to pursue the goals that you want to pursue. And if that is you, I need you to get this book. Get this book today because it's going to help you conquer all those fears that are holding you back, the insecurities, the lack of self-confidence, and it's going to help you gain that confidence in yourself and be able to push towards your dreams and goals without any limitations. So get this book today from the miracleperspective.com forward slash five rand. Or click down below, there's a link that's going to lead you straight to the website where you're going to order the book and it's going to be shipped right to you. It's going to help you overcome your fears and gain the necessary confidence in yourself. I want you to have this book and I can't wait to see you holding this book and improving yourself. It's finished. I'm backed up by things, but I'm also backed up by my truth. Mm -hmm. Because you can strip off all the qualifications. Mm -hmm. You can strip off all the titles. At the end of the day, who are you? Mm. What's your identity? And I can tell you something, Miracle, that people... We, I've come across a lot of arrogant people. Mm. And Linda, on my journey, where sometimes I would be a bit cocky, I, I say that now God does not waste time with discipline in Asia. Mm -hmm. he, he's not going to wait for 10 years. He's going mm. to do it immediately. Okay. You know, so I'll, I'll get disciplined when I do, when I step out of character mm. or when I become big headed. You get me? And those, those are some of the pearls of wisdom that come with, you know, um, achieving and, you know, get, getting seats at the table. Mm. Because one thing that, even though our parents have instilled it in us, is humility. But humility has to reign in all that you do. Mm. Never ever think you are bigger than other people. Never mm. think you are better than other people, you know. Um, and respect people. Mm see people be humble no matter how how much you achieve how much money you've got like let me tell you those things don't matter when you engage with people because people want they don't engage with the qualification mm. they engage with the person that acquired the qualification and without that qualification who is that person huh. you know so I, I get grounded by such things where I'm just like, ah, it's, it's a paper, but I still need to be a mom, I still need to be a sister, I need to be an employer to my help, I need to be a friend to my friends, I need to, I need to be me, you know. So humility is very, very important. And yes, the confidence will be backed up by those things. But again, let's take them away. We can't. We can't. That's you. That's me. You are, they, they make you. They make you. You see, that's, that's, that's the thing that also <laughs> people like you, who are in your shoes, you try to downplay the things you've done by trying to be this humble person. No, it's, humility, it's, not, it's, it's not. It's a good not, speech you just made, by the way. Humility and that. No, it's, but it's not downplaying them. Not my, my your, achievements, is, your achievements. Your yes, achievements. Let's not, let's not, let's not, not take away them. that. We don't, we don't downplay yes. them. I was damn hard to get those 100%. achievements. 100%. Yes. But what I'm just saying that before lay those achievements, the confidence was there. 100%. Yes. You. And... Before those achievements, there was a label. There was a label for you. Yes. Right. Yes. And you stripped me off those achievements. She's still going to be confident. She's still going to be mm. that person. She's still going to be respectful. Mm. She's still going to, you know, be be grounded. Mm. Because that's something that a lot of people lose mm. once they attain and acquire certain things in life. Mm. They they step up. Mm. You know, they they level up. They from being 
um Again. sorry something like uh they call it level out they level, level out. out yes actually level out right and then they start looking down on people yes. and uh, you know I, I i think the space that i'm in as well academia humbles yes. you because you are not just dealing with students they humble you but you're also dealing with professors mm. right and liberal now wants to start understanding their journeys and people differ but the ones that i'm surrounded by are the most grounded people beautiful that sometimes we look about it some of them have imposter syndrome hmm. right but it's, it's 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 a space that reminds you you're still human you're still a person you still have to work with people you mm. still have to deal with people right mm. so you can never be above anyone beautiful and now getting into this new job you just got on twitter how did you manifest that job? Yo, oh, guys, let me tell you the power of social media, right? Yeah. So, there's a lady I've been following who runs, she's the CEO of the, one of the regulatory bodies, mm. right? I'm not going to say which one because then <laughs> it's, it's a bit of, it's controversial, yeah, right? Okay. So, I want to know. That. Actually, I'm going to say it. Yeah. So, she's the CEO of the Advertising Regulatory Board of South Africa. So that's a board that regulates advertising. So when you guys go and complain about adverts yes. that you see on TV, that you hear on radio, that yes. you see on social media, right? That you see in store, mm. they, they go to a certain body, right? Mm. So there's this lady that I've been following. I've always had interest in advertising ethics and law. So then I was like, I want to follow this lady to the CEO because I love that work and I use that work in my classes. So I followed her on Twitter two years ago. Then she was supposed to do a book launch. Mm. And I remember I went with one of my friends. So when we get to the mall, Kuros Bank Mall, there's a bomb scare. Yeah. So the book launch is cancelled. And I'm like, this was my opportunity to actually get to meet her face to face and, wow. you know, like network with her and engage her, you know, mm. because on Twitter is, is Twitter, mm. right? But anyway, I was patient, Shen. I waited patiently. So last week, Friday, I'm home. She, my daughter's gone. She's gone to her dad's. And then I'm, I'm busy on Twitter because I'm always on Twitter. Right. Busy on Twitter. Then there's a tweet that comes up. Yeah. Um, don't be scared. Don't be shy. Tag the organization that you would like to work for hmm. this year. Your girl tags the ARB. And I just put a candle, I think, and a heart, and you know that prayer you want to go. I'm like, I, and I, then I go on with my other tweets. Saturday morning, as I'm getting ready to go and see a friend of mine, my calendar is a response. Wow. Oh, let's chat. Please email at. I got it. So I respond, I'm like, oh wow, thank you so much for the response. I'll send an email during the course of the day, which I did on Saturday after I got to my friends and I sent an email. I was like, girl, everything has to wait. Mm -hmm. This email has to go out. Mm -hmm. Sent it and then um, then I went back on Twitter and said to her, but I've sent the email. Right? It was her who responded. Yes, it was her who responded. So anyway, we leave it there. Monday, Monday, I'm at the office. I hear emails are coming in. She's introducing herself. She's telling me, you know, that she's actually very excited about the fact that I see that as a dream job. Hmm. Because that's how she felt before she got into the job. Wow. Yes. So anyway, wow. she gives me the lowdown of what they do and everything. And then she's like, no, let's have a, me a meeting. Wow. During the week. Right. So we have the meeting during the week. So we let her know Thursday I'm available and yeah. Thursday, then I go all the way because she was like, We can do it virtually or in person. So I'm like, No, I prefer to do it in person. I don't mind driving down because it's it's a it's a huge opportunity for me, mm. right? And I get to be in the space of seeing the work that they do. Sorry, guys, my, my baby, baby is opening an baby. ice cream. Yeah, yeah she she's, she, she's opening up an ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so then I got Thursday, I go there. So I had a, because I'm also into podcasting now, so I had a podcasting interview in the morning. Yeah. And then, and then I had to pass somewhere. So passing somewhere in between, in transit to the place, that delayed me a bit. 
So I ended up being late for my meeting, but I was about 15 minutes late and GPS was also losing me, right? So then I sent her like an email to say, no, I'm running a bit late in, 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 but she's like, mm. Mm. I'm like, <laughs> that's the impression. That's the impression. Mm. That's not how it works, girl. Yes. Don't do that. And I, I, I blame the, the person that made me date knows who they are. Anyway, <laughs> and <they're laughs> and I know they're going to watch this. <laughs> I know they're going to see this. They know themselves. Yep. Anyway, so then I get there and I can say, and I'm like, can I please see? I'm Gail. Okay. I'm phone and then she comes up. And here I am. You know, when you're in like disbelief, I'm like, I'm here. Mm. Sila. Yo. We are here. Like, we are sitting you here. You are in your dream. I'm in my dream. I, and I'm, wow. I'm going to be interacting face to face with the lady that is running the organization that has my dream job in it. Wow. Anyway, so she comes in and she's like, oh my gosh, okay, you're here. You look so flushed. Because obviously, you know, I'm hacking, you know, I'm late in, in, in. But anyway, don't be late. That's another thing. Don't be late. So then we go in, we start talking, and then she's like, tell me more about you. And I tell her, you know, mom, in, 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 in. And also, you're, you're talking away from me. I feel like, come, talk to me. Yes. I miss you already. You miss me already. Yes. Okay. Miracle was me to literally talk to him. So talk to me, yes. So, mm. And I'm talking to the audience no, as well. No, they are. I they will watch us they, talk. They're watching us talk, but they also want to see. It's fine. They'll invite you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Miracle. Um, yes. So we sit in there. Then there's two documents on the table. Right? Um, it's how to write a decision. Okay. And then template. You have the decisions. Right. So I'm um, like, okay, it's like, sorry to do this to you, but I'm so sorry to train you like in the space of an hour. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is how we do things. This is Amy. Eva. Okay. Yeah. So I got the job on a part time basis. Are you lying? I'm telling you. Are you lying? I'm telling the truth. Jeez, girl. Just like that? Just like that. But now... Wow! But now it's to deliver. Wow! It's to deliver. So I'm getting my first matter next week. Wow! That I need to work on. So anyway, fun. the meeting continues, right? And I'm still in wow. disbelief. I'm like, yo, oh, Twitter. Shoot your shot! Shoot your shot! That's the biggest lesson here, guys. Shoot your shot. Shoot your you shot. see, the very same way people shoot their shots in the DMs and go message. Yes. Do it if you want your dream job. Guys, well, it manifests. I've got, got the lesson right here. It manifests. So I'm sitting with her then, yeah, then eventually we finish, we wrap mm. up. And then I'm like, can I please get a photo? Because I need to now um, do a follow up on Twitter. Hore, this is how it started. This is where it is. And this is how it's going. Hey. So we we thingy, we take the photos and then while we're taking the photos, she's instructing the ladies that's taking the photos to make sure that A and B shows wow. in that photo. Wow. So we do that and then we part ways. And then I'm like, I'm gonna take photos outside the building with the signage. <laughs> you know, like I, I'm here. <laughs> wow. I'm here and I'm going to narrate the story, right? So anyway, um then now First point of reference, the person that made me late. So I'm like, you made me <laughs> late, but I'm here, I'm in. Your girl is in, type of thing, you know. Yeah. Fine. Second point of reference, family. Because they, they didn't know. So mm. so it was a it was quite profound for the family, right? Because back in 2015, I did a course in commercial forensic law. Okay. Because my father okay. wanted me to go into marketing. Um, research and ethics and everything but to back that up to amplify it on top of the qualifications that I've got in marketing let's let's do other courses to differentiate and uniquely position mm. so I did commercial forensic yes. law which I passed and then I graduated from and then um, the following year I enrolled for commercial forensic investigation and accounting but I did not complete them because it was the time when I was going through my divorce so I had mm. to I had to literally get my headspace right. So um, I will complete them. Mm. So that's a qualification I did 2015. Mm. And it's just been sitting there. Like, right. Wow. Lo and behold, it's in alignment with this job. 
Oh, wow. Yes, so I told her I've got this background and she's like, no, it's perfect. You know, it's too perfect. You do, you teach consumer behavior, it's perfect. You teach advertising. Wow. I'm like, wow. This is so profound. You know why? Mm -hmm. When I teach people how to drive, I I look at the mirrors, eh? mm. and I'm, when I'm talking about the mirrors, I'm like, you've got your rear view mirrors, mm. you've got this one that's here, the rear view as well, mm. and you've got this one that you you look at yourself, mm. the, the shade mirrors. So I'm like, I asked my, my students, why do you think the maker of the car decided to put a mirror here? And the only thing you see in that mirror is yourself, mm. nothing else. Mm. Why is it important for you to see yourself in a car? Mm. And the profound thing is that how I interpret the situation mm. is that, all right, you've got this windscreen is big, showing you where you are going. Mm. The rear view mirrors are small, mm. showing you where you come from. Mm -hmm. Meaning that the main focus in life is the front view, where you are going. You fail forward, you move forward. You move forward. <laughs> you However, forward. you don't forget where you come from. Yes, don't forget where you come and from. And you mentioned background. Yes. Your family and stuff. So you don't forget where you come from, but you don't fixate on it. That's why That's the mirrors the are small. Yes. You yes. fixate on the future. Yeah. That's why the windscreen is big. big. But then there's this one that you see yourself only. Mm. Like, okay, what does that mean? Mm. And how I saw that is that as much as you're focusing on the future, mm. where you're going, with ambition, mm. you want to work for ARB, you've been wanting to work for ARB all this time. <laughs> but before you get there, then you have to open this thing and you ask yourself, you only see yourself only. Mm. Ask yourself, are you equipped? Are you, equipped? are you ready for that future you're going into? Because mm. sometimes you'll be going out the house, you're in a rush, you want to go into that meeting. Forgetting that you've got things in your eyes, you've got boogers in your nose, you've got and you're going to meet people, people there, you know? and it's an interview. Mm. So that mirror is there to say, wait, before you go into the future, open it a bit, look at yourself, are you okay? And that is where the preparation is. And you're telling me that years ago. Yes, that's like, how many years ago? Nine, ten. Nine, ten. Yes. But no, you, eight years ago, actually. You had this preparation. I had this preparation. Which it was I, ready, just there, waiting for you. Yes. So now, so family WhatsApp group, I dropped the photos. And I informed them that I am pleased to announce that I have been contracted by the ARP hmm. as an external decision maker or adjudicator, as they call them. And... I just came from the meeting. Yo. Mom sends clapping emoji emojis. Mm -hmm. Dad is ecstatic because he's like, I told you, you owe me, wow. you owe me, I told you, I told you you must wow. go into forensic marketing and this is you becoming a forensic marketer. Wow. My sister, my so I put in the screenshot of the Twitter one, yeah. right? So I put it in there and then my brothers in law are also congratulating me. So the younger sister is like so you got this gig through Twitter. I'm like, yes. And then she goes and writes in caps. Ladies and gentlemen, the power of social media. <laughs> and they're just like, okay. oh, so got my job through Twitter. Oh. The job that she started literally the 1st of December last year. For reals? Yes. Jeez. The power of social media. Wow. So then my older sister, because she was with us the whole week. Uh-huh. Right? She calls me because she knew I was going there. She calls me. She's like, yes, girl. Yes, because we call each other bronzies, right? Uh -huh. Bronzies in the sense that we live the bronze lifestyle. We don't live yeah. the extravagant, lavish, lavish gold, you know? Uh -huh. We live the bronze lifestyle that everybody looks down on. You know, like, about the peasants type of thing. So she's like, yes, bronzy. You know, we, the uneducated ones, we, the uh -huh. dumb ones, we, the, we the ones that are always jealous oh, wow. of other people. <laughs> Because the thing is, people have their own misconceptions about us, and oh, it's people that don't like us. So we're like, yeah, well, we're, we're the bronzies. <laughs> you know, we, we may not drive the um, the Ceratis of this yes. world, but we are okay. We, mm. we, we're existing, mm. we're living, you know. Mm. So she's like, yes, bronzy, yes. Yo, you've made my week, you know. She's so excited because, again, the t line of work that she's in is very similar to this job, you know. 
there's a lot of law and whatever that's happening in that space. Yes, it's like, yes, yes. we're gonna pop bottles tonight, we're gonna celebrate this because this is a big milestone. This is a huge milestone because I'm I'm going into the space that I've been wanting to go into to practice what I've been wanting to practice mm. and to use my skills and differentiate myself. Mm. You know, so it's a big deal. It it's is. Like, wow. Wow. So, then my father video calls me. It's like I told you, I told you, I told you. Like I, I you owe me, <laughs> and I'm like, and yeah. You do. Well, I owe him. So I'm like, I know I owe you. Yeah. So are they okay? I know you. You owe me. Um, you owe me another qualification, Ooh. and then I'm giving you two years. He said three. The I don't know. I'm giving you two years. Wessa. Wessa. Mm. And I'm like, no, stop. I'm like, you always give me years. After my divorce, he gave me five years. And after five years, he was like, time to recover now. Yeah, he's like, no, five years, you're recovering. Oh. After five oh, years, you, so it's you'll time be. time to move now. Yeah, after five years, we'll be in a different position. So I'm giving you five years. Five Gee, years. Father is a demon. He's like, you got time up. You got time up. He's like, yes. You're a man, mate. Five years. He mm. wrote five years. Yeah, well, you've done very well within that five years. So now it's like three, no, two. I don't let's go right up. I've got this. I cannot, you say I don't listen sometimes. I do listen. Mm. Yeah, right. I, I listen to you, you know. So I, and I know you do listen, you know, you just go about doing things your own way, mm. but you do listen. So you know, I, I owe you, I owe you that qualification, you'll get it, don't you worry. But I also give you two bottles of wine. He's like, Yes, because I need to celebrate. <laughs> I'm like, yes, daddy. I'll give you two bottles of wine. Mm. So he was so hyped up. Like so so yeah. hyped up because it's like my girl, this is where I see you. Like oh, it's beautiful. manifesting beautifully, you know. Baby. And the the other thing is because I said to him, it's a it's a new space in the sense that you know I'm I'm going to be doing new work, so I'm willing to learn, and I'm willing to like I was saying to her as well, for it, I will make mistakes, but it's part of the learning process. Mm. And where I make mistakes, you will guide me. You know, you will teach me because it's the first time doing mm. this type of work. Wow. So I'm, I'm, I'm willing, like, basically I'm an intern, mm. right? Because I'm not there to go and wow. prove that I'm clever or I can do the job. I want to learn how to do the job. I want to master the craft of Jeez, doing man. the job. Your level of confidence is, is just admirable. It's impeccable. Remember the, the post I put on, on, on what, what is it? Is it Facebook? Mm. This past few weeks, I was like, con confidence is when you know you've got no point to prove and you, here you are your 12 years experience working as a marketing teacher and now you get into this new space and you just reduce yourself back to i'm willing to learn i'm willing to learn because i i, I wow. need somebody learn. else would have been what's the yo so much pressure guys i need to show up i need to do the best like they would give them unnecessary pressure, they give themselves unnecessary pressure to just want to go and show off and then they start messing up. They start messing up. And you know the funny thing is in the in the the booklet that she gave me, mm. she says don't show off. Wow. <laughs> she put it in caps, do not show off. Mm. Right. And don't get too creative. But then that's a mm. manual that she gives all the people that she trains. Because mm. the ex exactly what you're talking about. Then people want to prove. to prove. No point so I just said no. Now I'm mm. I'm going in there. I'm going to learn. Where I make mistakes, you're going to correct me. And you're going to guide me. Mm. And we feedback. We get feedback, and then we feed forward. And I believe in failing forward as well, right? Mm. Because at the end of the day, um, we 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 humans we learn, and sometimes we may not do things perfectly. Mm. But I believe that if we open up, we, if we are open to criticism and mm. constructive criticism, mm. Mm. right, that is meant to grow us. Mm. Then we are bound to learn more and excel better, you know. Right. So, so I was just like, no, because um, she was like, no, it, it can get a bit tedious because of the cases and everything. Mm. But when I just do what you can do, and then, um, so then she says to me, the beauty about what you just said to me is that because I don't usually. Um, like if you if the work is not right, I prefer to fix it myself and then move on. I don't go back and give mm. feedback because I'm just like it's a waste of time. I want to get this thing out. Mm. So you are going to teach me by you being open ah. to me, to me giving you feedback and requesting the feedback. You're teaching me to give feedback. Ah. 
So I said, okay, it's fine. So I was telling him, my dad, that, and he's like, no, we're sitting because you are teachable. Mm. Go in there, you. do your mess, yeah. your best, sorry, mm-hmm. and be yourself. Mm. And learn, follow the instructions, and, you know, create your impact. Mm. And just be you. Wow. You know, really so I'm just like you. So WhatsApp group was buzzing. Dad video call. He's excited. My sister gets here. She's like, he's excited. You know, um, and then my friends as well were very very happy. You know, because they know. Like I remember New Year's Day. None of my other friend went camping for New Year's. So, mm. so as we were driving back, I was telling her because we were talking about what we want to do this year, mm-hmm. and she's an attorney. Mm. I want. So I told her, oh, no, this is what I want to do, and then this is where I want to work, and, 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 27 days later into the new year. You did tell about this? Yes. Wow. I was, we were unpacking it really too while driving back oh, from wow. the campsite to home. Jeez. And I'm like, I'm pacing myself, I'm going to do my vision board and everything. And you put this on the vision board? I put it in the mental vision board. Okay. Right. The, my, my vision board at this is very simple. It's basically just quotes and mantras. That I'm living by, mm. and, when I, and then um, a few images here and there, but nothing excessive, nothing mm. heavy, nothing mm. too populated. I'm, mm. I've kept it very simple, mm. and then obviously mentally, mm. I visualize certain things, right? Mm. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, that logo, yeah, ARB is there, um, this and that is there, this and that is there, you know. So my friend, I I call her and I tell her, and I'm like, twenty seven days later, hmm. see that. Location. Yeah, location, see mm. that she's like, oh no, you don't even need to go and study further, you've got the qualifications, girl. I'm like, but I need to enhance sure. the, the, the knowledge because remember that we're living in a digital time where things are changing yes. rapidly yes. and you cannot you cannot bank on a qualification that last that eight years ago, just mm. like that. Mm. You know, you need to update yeah, things, really things change and that's my point as to why I want to go back. Mm. So manifestations, guys, they are real if you put your mind to something and if you're intentional and sometimes really do shoot your shot. Mm, powerful. I like what you're saying because it links it links with what uh, Brother Les was speaking about last week, the power of meditation. Mm. When you meditate, you are manifesting yes. what you're meditating on. Mm. And what you're speaking about right now, it's like if you're having this thought, and your mind has, has, has always been fixated on this place you've always wanted to work at mm. for a very long time. And you manifested it. So in a way, it was a way of mani- uh, meditating towards your dream. And stuff towards, like the, towards the dreams. And mm-hmm. so there's certain songs that I listen to as well. Mm-hmm. I love um, Songs of Blackness. Right? I loved that, that group so much. Mm. They were also driven and led by Quincy Jones. Mm. So there's about three of their songs that I love the most. Mm-hmm. The the one that hits me the most is I'm going all the way. You must guys must listen to that song. Okay. It's that is my manifestation song. That is my go to mm. song. You know, like I put that song on full blast. I read the lyrics. I she was gonna kill you, friend. She's, yeah, she's actually she's eating this ice cream. These ice creams bro. like yeah. I'm sure she's on number five now. Mm. Since I've been here. Since he's been here. All right. The number seven. Seven. Somebody so, sent help. Yeah. So I, I listen to the lyrics and I listen intentionally. I play the songs, you know. Um, I'm going all the way um, optimistic as well as, can I know what's the other one? Um, uh, uh, I forgot it, but I'll check now. Mm. So those three songs are my go-to songs. And then I also like <coughs> Brand New Heavies. Mm. Um, very old group, right? They've got... Um, Beautiful music as well. Um, dream on dreamer, because I'm a dreamer, right? Um, sometimes, which is actually an accountability song, and then never stop. Like, you know, um, so it's positive music that just reinforces all these manifestations and all these messages and mm. everything. And that is what, when when I'm having my typical day, before I get to work, I listen to that music, mm. you know. Um, when I'm driving, when when I'm having a moment, the first song that plays in my mind, I play it mm. and I listen to it and I read the lyrics, mm. you know. So that is what's, what's helping me. And I think also 
um, just being the authentic person that I am that just feeds into everything else because I don't want to attract things that are not for me. Mm. I'm intentional about what it is that I want and what I want for my life and my journey. So that's why I shot my shot mm. and I was like, if that happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, we'll make it happen somehow because I don't take no for an answer. Mm. That, that. I don't take no for an answer. That. Interesting. Anywho, now let's go to that topic that we have put on hold. <clears throat> I have it. Let me bring it in. <clears throat> the juicy one. The juice. The juicy one. Woo! Yep, and you're taking the juice. The juicy one. <laughs> Feminism. Yes. And I want to get into this in this fashion. <clears throat> Yesterday you posted a picture of, what is it? What's that movie? Brown Love. Brown Sugar. Brown Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> you posted a picture of that 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 that, that movie, this. and <laughs> your caption. You were talking love, right? <laughs> you you still a believer in love. You still a believer in this type of love and all of that. Yes. And wada wada wada. <laughs> and on the other hand, you are a professional feminist. On the other hand, you are a divorcee. Yes. So my mind is like, all right. And while you were introducing this topic of feminism earlier on, you were like, you are not that feminist that hates on men. No, I don't hate on men. So that is interesting to me. Because somebody in your situation, a divorcee, mm. for them to be feminist, obviously, most of them, they hate on the men. Mm. Because they've been hurt by the exes and yes. stuff like that. So that's the narrative. That is the movie narrative. Yes. So maybe tell us about your story of marriage and divorce and how you ended up like this today. Have you ever wondered why all the top athletes and the high performers of this world have coaches? Yep, that is because coaches help you keep focused on your goal. They help you unleash your next level potential. And that is why I'm here. If you are somebody who's looking for someone who's going to push you, keep you accountable to your goals, help you clarify your goals, and most importantly, give you a strategy to help you achieve those goals. Well, click on the link down below. Let me be your coach. My name is Miracle TM Peter Wane, the confidence coach and the author of The Five Friend University. I want to give you a 15 minutes free discovery call to discover whether or not I can help you. I can get you to that next level. Just click on the link down below, get a 15 minutes free discovery call from me, and I'm going to take you to the next level into helping you become the person you are meant to be. It's finished. See you on the other side. So my story of marriage and divorce was that I was I was with my my ex who happens to be my daughter's father for mm. ten years actually. But we yeah we were together for ten, married for two. Mm. Um, but we had a beautiful daughter. We have her. Yes. Right. Very beautiful. So it didn't work. It just didn't work, and I just had to just get myself out of the situation. We we two different people, right? Mm. Um, we came in very young. Mm -hmm. We got married fairly young, I would say. But through growing up, how old? I was married at twenty eight. Yeah. You were twenty. Okay. But I met him when I was twenty one. When you were twenty one, okay. yeah. So with you know when when you realize certain things, for this is not alignment. We're not in alignment, mm -hmm. and we are two different people, mm. and we cannot force something to work. Well, I wasn't going to force something that was not working for me to work. That I wasn't going to do. And especially where it's eroding your soul. Mm. And we, I have a child as well that I have to lead. You know, I have to take care of. I have to set a, a, a precedence for her. Mm. Right. And it was just unhealthy for both him and I to always be in conflict mm. like that. Mm. You know. So then he has been um, gracefully divorced. And I feel like why I say gracefully is because there was no drama of mm. I hate his family. I'm mm -hmm. going to no 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 no. I I, I you don't wanna, uh, no I, I don't punch his tires. And I don't like subscribe to those <clears throat> narratives, and I know it's different for people, right? Mm. But I chose to divorce with my dignity in place. That's beautiful. Because at the end of the day, we have a beautiful daughter. Mm. We still need to co-parent, mm. 
and I am for my daughter knowing her father and having a relationship with her father and also having a relationship with the paternal side of his family or oh. her family. I, I, I'm, I don't compromise on that. Right. So people tend to forget when they're in the process for a, there's life post. Mm. Life mm. has to be rebuilt again, you mm. know, and life has to continue, especially where there's children mm. involved. So I devoted my dignity in place, and my parents knew it very well because they were with me throughout the whole process, mm. right? And they kept on saying, don't, 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 just be yourself, be you. And fine, um, f f the feminism has always been there. So I come from a very feministic household. Mm -hmm. Dad has three girls, mm. right? And he allows us to be the way we are. He actually advocates for us to be the way we are, right? got an uncle who's got three boys. Uncle has three daughters through us, right? He he also is like, I want you this way, please. Mm. And anyone that has a problem with you being this way, must leave you alone. You're not hurting anyone, are you? Right, you're just being yourself. So if those two men in my life can actually allow us to be, are they going to be called trash? Hmm, beautiful. I've got nephews. Are they going to be called trash? I've got a lot of guy friends. Are they trash? I'm there as well. Are you trash? Am I trash? Is he trash? Am I trash? Is he trash? <laughs> Girl! We saw that! We saw, that. We saw you nodding! <laughs> but so. before we get there, I want to understand, alright, 10 years together, mm. Uh, married for two, mm. meaning you were eight years together before you got married. Yes, it was seven, yeah, seven years together, going for eight. Going for eight yeah. before you got married. Mm. You're 21, I understand you were still young, maybe naive at the time. It was my first, like, long term relationship, like my first relationship. Yeah. And you know, the way it started off, it was beautiful. All right, this how, started, how did it go, start? you don't meet at a trap, no. <laughs> <laughs> we met. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 no, I'm with you there. I'm with you there. The I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, you, meet, you meet at the club, you know what the intention is. It's, no, we, 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 we met in varsity. We met as um, he was the chairperson of his residence. Jeez. And I was um, not, I was hard covered, I was handling the marketing portfolio for our residence. Mm. So we met in a leadership position. Leadership people, like, ah, oh, you a leader, yes, I'm a leader, just, a and power clicked, couple. Yeah, and, we, and we clicked, Shem, you know, I, we, we clicked very well. It was, wow. And it's, it was just that that type of connection, mm. right? Um, and we were just together, you know. So there was a lot that happened. Some of the things, um, for the for just to respect his space as well, mm -hmm. and our daughter, I won't go de yeah. into depth with them Understood. because at the end of the day, we still we still talk, we still yes. co-parent, yes. you know. And he's my daughter's father, mm. you know. Mm. But um, where it became toxic, it became toxic, mm. right? Both that, toxic. Within the seven years before you got married, or after when you after with, getting before, married. Or and everything. Combined. Everything, yes. But we ignored sometimes we ignore things, uh, hoping that they'll change. Uh, right? But they won't change. You get me? And we were both toxic to each other. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I will say. And this is where accountability Jeez. also comes into play. I was play. about to point that out. Accountability You're one person also who's comes very into responsible, play. hey? You're very responsible. You do take responsibility. I admire you for that. You Thank always you. say I in your situations. Should... You're never the victim. No, I'm not a victim. <laughs> I'm a victim. <laughs> So accountability takes is very, very important. Mm. And you need to be vulnerable and honest with yourself mm. to be able to say, you know, I did not, yes, I did do wrong things. Mm. I contributed, mm. right? But I had to also save myself from the situation because it was bringing the worst out of me. Mm. And it was toxic for both him and I and for our child. Mm. You know, um, I've heard very, so many stories about my divorce journey, how my feminism got him out, how this and that, how me not being submissive and I'm just like, I don't subscribe to those. My family knows the truth. Meh. My mm. family knows the truth and we stick by the truth that my family knows. Were you submissive? No, oh, I'm not submissive. <laughs> what is submission? <laughs> <laughs> so you are not submissive? No, you know what, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm in a space now where I'm actually... Learning stuff? <laughs> I'm learning... It's happening naturally, 
Okay. Where I'm just like, I'm not gonna argue that. Like, it's fine. You're right. Shut. Up. <laughs> it's okay. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm in that space. To who though? I'm in. I'm just in that space right now in to my who? life. I'm in that space in my life. Yes. Right now. To who? To Tadex. To who? Tadex. I can't believe you saw my status yesterday. Brown sugar kind of love. So to ta- to Tay Dix. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. To no, but um, how does that help though? If you're just like, ah, it's fine. If you no, like that, it's, fine. it's, how does it's that just help? I choose my battles, and um, it you know submission happens in its in a very weird way. Uh-huh. Depending on the person that you are submitting, submitting to. to. Okay, so you are not submissive. No, I've never, because I've never been submissive with him. I've never had, like, there's never been that. Be submissive. There's never been that. Okay. We're just two personalities that that end up clashing very much. You know, maybe he <clears> wanted <throat> the submission. I don't know. But what? How do you interpret submission? When they say a wife should submit to the not husband. Not according to societal norms. Apparently, okay. You don't have a voice. All right, but in your own understanding it's, of it's, if you are to submit to a man, so now we're moving forward. Now we're moving forward. You're to meet your your, your Teddy. Uh, Teddy, you know, Teddy, Teddy, uh, yeah. Almost facing Tay commented on my status update yesterday. I'm like, ah. All right, so here's Tay. You're moving forward, and you are be- being so, this new person. So Tay, willing to submit. What does that mean? So Tay, Tay knows how to get me to fight. Without okay. fighting back, and eventually I was just like, "Oh, it's okay. You have a point. It's okay. I'm not gonna fight with you. I'm not gonna argue with you. Mm. It's fine. Um, it's okay. easy to just do. It's easy to just be. You mm. know, to just do and be without, without feeling like you're forced to. You get me? Mm. It's just a natural like you know when you get tranquilized. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how I view submission. Okay. Where it just happens like. We feel like it's a it's great it's a great thing to serve your man. You're serving him because it's lovely. Apparently, like it's like I don't have to feel like nothing when I was like submit. Where are we here? No, mm-hmm. it's like okay. <laughs> I don't want to go into that. I don't want to go into that. I don't want to go into that. So <laughs> no, because I'm still learning it. You okay. know, it's 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 just it's something that's happening naturally. It's not yeah. forced. It's not commanded upon you yeah it's not according to what society says it should be yeah it's just like you know when you just melt yeah yeah <laughs> when you just <laughs> so so <laughs> tay tay digs hi whoever is watching this must tag him <laughs> even though yeah his wife is going to be so mad at me oh, wow he has a wife <laughs> no tay digs the real tay digs is married he, he remarried um but anyway so yeah all right so anyway yeah so the divorce journey is we incompatibility there was just mm. a lot but i'm i'm happy that we are where we are today mm. because we are able to raise our daughter you mm. know um we are able to still be there for her collectively you mm. know um in terms of her birthday parties mm. he's there you know he takes her every second weekend or whatever mm. whenever you know so it's a it's a growing space. Mm. It's a growing space, and you always put the minor child mm. in in the midst of everything because it's that best interest that mm. matter. Was that also the reason why you got married? Because you got the child before you got married, right? Yes, I got the child before I got married. So were you getting married to protect her as well? It was just a matter of you know what? It's uh, um we've been together for so long. We have a child. Understanding that it, with the difficulty, with the, the difficulties, we'll see. Like it's yeah, going to be but more complicated to separate than to just. Continue. Yes, you know, um, yeah. and and the other thing, I'm I'm a I'm a lover of note. Yeah. I'm I'm a romantic of note. I'm a lover of note. So, you know, at that time, thinking about starting from scratch again with a new mm. person, I was like, I, there's a devil in you. You're not understanding that life is too long. Yeah, but what I appreciate about our journey is that I feel like we we came full circle. Yeah. It's important that you went the whole We went way. full circle, I now know. Yeah. And I have no regrets. Beautiful. I have no regrets because I learned so much. Beautiful. And I, I believe that a lot of things would have, you know, life would have taken a different turn mm. had I not walked out of that situation. Mm. I don't think you'd be seeing me today. I don't think mm. we would have even met. Mm. 
so a lot of things happen by design you know mm. um and and it's just one of those things mm. you know um then oh yeah then the tea dicks thing so that's something i put in 2017 i was watching brown sugar i was i love brown sugar mm. right and my aunt was teasing me the other day she's like i know another type of men that you like i know like i know mm. you you've confirmed it for me i know Mm. I don't go that route. But no, I know you, you're my child. I guess. Mm. I know. Because she she understands my persona so well. And she you know, she was now reflecting on my daughter's father. Oh, no, he's called dark. <laughs> so, okay. So I just like I know. <laughs> I know. And it makes sense why you'd put a tea digs there because Oh <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, so anyway, yeah, so I put that thing up. It was, it was in 2017, the year of my divorce. Uh -huh. Because I, I just, so when I divorced, I was like, oh, I'm going to be my Prince Charming. We're going to get married. It's going to be. Just after the divorce. Just after. So I'm like, no, I'm, 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 you know, when you come out of a situation with so much optimism, right? Mm. Because you're thinking, oh, no, a year later, I'm going to be married again. I'm going to be my person. Mm. No, but then the streets wake you up. Because the streets are not. <laughs> the streets give you a reality check. Called gang. Okay. It's, it's a jungle out there. Alright. You know. Yeah. So being the intentional person that I was, I put that thing up. I was watching Brown Sugar one night. Yeah. Revisiting the movie again. And then I'm just like, oh, gosh. Oh, Tay. Mm. <laughs> also watched how Stella got a group back and he was the younger oh, version of him. Oh, man, I guys <laughs> but do you but do you see something i want you to notice something what i'm also saying that yeah i had the opportunity to really hate men because of yes. experience but no yeah i had the opportunity to say you know what i'm not I, this love thing yes and it's interesting that immediately after you're out of this you're looking for the next yes i'm looking for the next I'm, and i'm opening myself and you're up. optimistic towards i'm it. optimistic you know um and i'm still very optimistic up until today even going forward because I just believe that the right people find themselves at the right time. Mm. They find each other at the right time. Right. So my and that, that post, the caption was like this. I'm taking a break from work to daydream and manifest my T Dex. Mm, I saw yeah, yeah, I remember. <laughs> that and yeah. then those that know me, they know. Those that know situations know. And then a T Dex happens to comment on that post. So <laughs> No, okay, okay, okay. In terms of personality, mm. do you think you attract the same type of person? I used to attract the same type of person. Until when? Until last year, November, where I put a boundary yeah. to that. because. So it was the same person up until last same, year, November? Sa same type of people. Yeah. Same type of characteristics. Why was that? Because I, so being an empath, right? What's that? Being the person that likes saving the world, must have, uh, you know, the hospital, mm. no, the, 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 the bandage, ne? Mm. you end up overextending yourself, right? And then you end up attracting the wounded, the broken, the birth of the broken feathers mm. and the broken wings, right? You end up attracting mm. narcissists mm. as well. Who, what do narcissists do? To they feed, oppress you. They oppress you. They so obviously there was a lot of therapy involved in my whole journey. Yeah? And I remember when um, I was going for therapy, they were like, "We gonna be recovering you from narcissistic abuse." Right? And um, my therapist knew my situations very well, and she's like, "You know what? You you're a very kind and generous person. You're very nice. You're very loving. You're very empathetic and everything." But no, oh, girl. Because you're going to attract the same type of person. Mm. So, <clears throat> because sometimes we, we love people, we want to take care of people, we want to nurture people, we want to heal people, we want to, we want mm. to save people. Mm. 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 All for the good reasons. All for the good mm. reasons, but who saves us? Mm. And then we are always depleted because we're always giving and giving and giving and giving. Yes, the Almighty God definitely saves us. Mm. And I was saved last year, November. <laughs> yeah. Because I put boundaries in place. I was in a situation that actually tested 
whether I am authentic about the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm no longer going to save people. Mm. I'm no longer going to be that hospital for men that have issues, right? Mm. And that don't want to deal with their issues. Mm. And that end up blaming and projecting their issues, mm. right? I'm no more going to do that. So I was put in a very interesting situation, which I'm so happy it ended. Mm. Because that situation was a test for me. Are you going... Are you really going to be an, a hospital? Please, thank you, Nana. Are you really going to be a hospital again? After all the work that you've been doing, mm. after all <clears throat> the efforts, after all the interventions, after everything, are you going to still continue being a hospital? Mm. So I put a boundary in place to say, oh, hell no, I'm not a hospital. Go and sort yourself out. Ne? Mm. And then maybe in the future, mm. once you're sorted out, mm -hmm. we can reconvene. But mm. now I will not do this because it's triggering so much in mm. me. It's taking me back. It's derailing me. It's escalating my anxiety. Mm. So no, honey, not this year, not in this lifetime again. I've done this too many times. Mm. So bye-bye. You know, Erica Badu's, I guess I'll see you. No, it's not Erica Badu, it's, um, what's her name, man? Why? I guess I'll see you next lifetime. Mm. That song, I know the song, don't know the person, don't know the lyrics, and I like the It's tune. Erica, actually, it is Erica Badu. Uh, maybe we'll come back as butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, back to your question. Mm. My answer is yes. And, the minute I put that boundary in place, Sham, you know, you know when your anxiety goes down yeah. and you're happy again and you're glowing mm. again and you're just like I'm just light. Yes, you're light. And the beautiful thing about that is that the the person fell off and the God solidified my decision. Mm. Crazily so. Crazily so. God solidified my decision. Hore, baby girl, you ain't going back there. The red flags were there. And then a huge red flag meant like it just happened. You know when something seals the deal? Like, like I'm a flag. Donna, hey. I'm a flag. Like <laughs> you we, we ain't going back there. Mm. God made the point for it. The situation that solidified my decision happened, unfortunate as it is. Mm. But I'm a happy child. Beautiful. So now we have not yet had a different guy from the guys that you always attracted. So we are just in a space where you feel like, okay, now I'm ready to go the other way. No, direction. we do have a different guy. We do. Do we have? Yes, we already? do have a different guy. Oh, beautiful. and we are learning Congrats. each. It's not like congratulations. It's a friend. It's a. It's a. It's a friend. It's you a friend. We are all called, right? <laughs> Learn that we are friends. <laughs> You are exactly. a friend. You are a friend. You know that. You know that. Mm. Even though you never want to tell us about your other friend, but in so um, <laughs> <laughs> even though so <laughs> you never want to tell, tell us me, about your friend. So, <laughs> well, so my what? point is, my point is, now that you are here in this space, what are you gonna do mm. differently from what you've been doing? Because it all starts good. It all starts good, it all starts beautiful, but then things happen. We ignore all the red flags. Funny how the red flags are always there, They're but the intention there. is too big and it, it just keeps us moving. You know, this time I just said, I'm just going to go with the flow. <laughs> I'm just going to go with the flow. And yeah, good strategy. Hmm? Very good strategy. You know, like you get tired. Yeah. Still too early, life is too long. Life is too long, but. Now, what I said to you last week when we were talking, mm. yeah. I said for it, if something ends today, heal. We heal as we move. <laughs> we heal as we move. We we always we always postpone moving on because we're healing, right? Now I'm at a stage. But is it, is, is it is it a bad thing? It's a good thing for some. It's a bad thing for some. It's everything has its good and bad. But I'm at a stage in my life and in my journey yeah. where the show goes on. But you've healed. I'm healing. I'm still healing. Still not for me, healing yet. is a lifelong process. 
there's certain things that yes you know um there are normal triggers they don't upset me anymore they don't like if a situation if somebody talks about that other situation i'm gonna be like um okay i'm cool mm. maybe five years ago i'd cried out i've cried about it mm. but my point is that the show goes on she don't do she the show goes on and the show must go on yeah and the show has gone on and it's still moving i understand that but my only fear um my reservation is as much as the show goes on i'm just scared that we might push the show for now but we're just postponing the pain because the same things might happen that lead us to the same place again but in a in the you future know, you know the, the beautiful you know I mean? thing is i think the, the beautiful thing about the show going on mm. is that the show goes on with you being away of certain things and knowing certain things okay and how you react to certain things okay and you gauge your reactions you if i was in the situation again mm. how would i react to it right there's certain do's and don'ts there's certain boundaries that are being put in place and have been put in place and have been communicated mm. right so hey miracle stop questioning many things you just want to come to a wedding in the next five years <laughs> interesting all right yeah no, I, so I, we were on his case so i get you know okay we were on his case last let's, week let's conclude that let's, let's conclude on that his case. what i'm he saying he never is, wants to talk about no, his me, friend what i'm saying and is, what is less no listen, less co- listen, cautioned you yes but let's 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 conclude this one <laughs> <laughs> okay oh this guy let us conclude this one yeah uh, do i have the permission to conclude this one so how i conclude this is that <clears throat> As much as the show goes on, I understand that. One thing I like about you is that you are aware, number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, you are responsible. Yeah. And you are self-reflective. Yeah. And you are not a victim. So that's the beautiful thing that I like about you. Which put, makes me put like a... I'm, I'm, I'm a bit at ease, a little bit, with the show going on under those circumstances mm. with those characteristics that are mentioned about you mm. but as a standard i wouldn't recommend that why because moving with pain but who's moving with pain no, that's the not thing. you but who is moving with pain the person coming from pain so like in a, a person situation, coming from pain yes, in another situation in another situation okay getting into this another they need situation. to do the work exactly the work needs to be done exactly my point the work needs to be done My point and however right. they do the work remember that the work can be done in different ways it can you've okay. been going through therapist and you've been healing through because that, that you know other people heal differently yes i healed the way i found is fit for me because i know myself yes so you've healed and i've healed and i'm um, no i haven't healed <laughs> Healing. You see, we're back to the same thing. I'm healing. So my point. Yeah, I'm my, healing. Okay, let me finish my point. I'm healing. Let me finish but, my point. Let me finish my point. Other people may not have healed. Healed. Exactly. Other people may not have taken that responsibility. To, exactly. Yes. It's about that. Hundred percent. That's exactly what I was saying. It's about that. So we work on that. Hundred percent. Yes. And now talking to the world. <laughs> As I said. <laughs> It's a strategy that I wouldn't recommend to the world. Hey, right? sweetheart. Because of those S- things sweetheart. that I mentioned about you. Sweetheart. In your situation, in your and situation, I, I admire you because yes. of those but, things. But again, you wouldn't recommend them to the world, right? Because they say hurt people hurt people. Yes, and one of the things, but it's, it's a reality. It right? is a reality. But As I say. We, again, hurt people will hurt people. Mm. If you yourself, I know there's a person that I can give you an example. There's a person that is going around inflicting psychological trauma in a woman mm-hmm. because he's a hurt human being. True that. Ne? Happens all the time. Um, and the and he's a hurt human being himself, mm. right? And he's made it his modus operandi to hurt, to hurt, right? Until I come hurt. And it's gonna happen soon because I know it's, it's in the pipeline, <laughs> right? But we cannot always prescribe to people yes. how to do things. True that, and how we can to recommend. We can recommend. And it's a good and it's responsible a, it's, thing. It's a good and responsible recommend. thing, right? 
mm. but you cannot if 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 they feel like this is best for them yes it's best for them let them go and burn their fingers let them go and enjoy the happiness let them let them yes it's a journey yeah then life is too long life is too long with time life is too long and the family is very short right? <laughs> You want to get into that statement of yours? <laughs> <laughs> Your statement. <laughs> so, oh. ladies and gentlemen, this was a great conversation I've had. Oh, my word. With this wonderful, amazing lady right here next to me. Load shedding got the best of us, but we were undefeated. We worked with what we got, and the conversation went on, and we got to this far. And I'm very honored... And it was a very beautiful conversation I had with you. Although we didn't finish because we're still here at this conversation. You want, you want no, no, no. I didn't want to ask, but it's fine. All I was saying is I wouldn't personally recommend that as you're still in the pain. Let me finish. As you're still in the pain, you seek to move on to the next because it's just going to bring you into the next place. And you going into the next place is going to bring you in the same place. And you going into Guys, the next place. Let me finish. We are, we you are going into the next place with that pain. Here. You are causing pain to the other we people who could here. possibly have a beautiful you know and a successful life without you inflicting Do the pain you upon please. them. So please Do be responsible. Please. Live your Do life you. like she does. She is responsible. <laughs> Don't allow her to mislead you. She's responsible. She, she is not a victim. As we've heard in this situation and her story, she never looked at herself as a victim. The problem with hurt people is that they take themselves as victims. And moving into a situation as a victim is so much pressure on the next person. And you don't you 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 become an oppressor, in that you're overly sensitive. It it yeah. creates a barrier in conversation, in communication. And as much as these people, usually the people who are hurt, they're like I value communication. Mm. But in their value of communication, they don't realize that they're overly sensitive, which is a barrier to communication. So, but if you take time to heal self and become self aware, become self aware, then you become a person who self awareness can is very, get into very important. relationships and successful ones for that matter. So self awareness is very your very final important. and closing words, ma'am. I'm not done. Thank you. On the next episode, <gasps> we will come and finish. But your final your final words to the world. Self awareness is very, very important. Be <clears throat> be truthful to yourself and don't be afraid to embrace your vulnerabilities. Embrace your imperfections. You know this life is such a beautiful gift that we've been given and we've been also been blessed with beautiful people around us right and where you know that there's people that hurt people stay away from them stay away you know like why should you no, well you know you are a person who hurts people change that's fix a conversation for another day we'll, fix yeah, your life they can fix their lives can't deal with but, people like you in this world yeah so guys um now my, my story is a beautiful story and yes. i i love my story because it's a story that has shaped me and molded me into the woman that i am today but it doesn't help to be a victim it doesn't help to you know operate from a space of um pity self-pity right and we deserve good things we deserve love we deserve to be authentically cared for we deserve to also give and reciprocate right because we cannot always have people pouring into us, loving us, and when are you just receiving fella, but you're not giving anything in return, you're not reciprocating. So my two cents worth is that live your best life. Be aware, <clears throat> be self-aware, love you, do the self-love thing, it's very important because if you cannot love yourself, don't expect anyone else to love you. True that. Right? If you know you've got your own traumas, work on them, heal them, because they limit you from living your best and your most authentic life. And then another last, last thing is that, you know, um, you can't live a life in silos. Build authentic tribes. Put yourself out there within your tribes and you'll see how your tribes will always look, be there for you. And, you know, not save you, but accompany you on this journey of life. And in terms of hustling and putting yourself out there, shoot your shot. Next. The very same way people shoot their shots in the DM telling us that they love us, they want to be with us, they... Yo, I, I'm getting a lot of those on Facebook. People shoot, eh? Hey? No, people shoot. People shoot. Keep shooting, guys. So keep shooting for the right opportunities and use social media to put yourselves out there, to uniquely position yourself and to go after what you want and live a very intentional life while you're at it. While you're at it, while you're at the shooting of short to her, 
you have seen the type of lady she is. She is a strong woman. She's she's very responsible and she knows what she wants. And she 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 needs some guidance in terms of the submission as well, she knows. <laughs> but she's amazing, guys. Uh, other than all of the jokes and, and stuff aside, she's an amazing woman, ambitious, pushing forward, attacking the world, holding the the, the beast by the horns and riding it. She's Breaking amazing boundaries. and I admire her so much. Breaking boundaries. Doesn't take no for an answer and that is the mantra I took from her and that is what I strive to live by each and every day. This is the Miracle Perspective. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to subscribe and go to her podcast as well. Please tell them about your podcast. Okay, so I have day-to-day -day conversations with everyday people. So my podcast is called Conversations with Lebo Ramakopa. He will he probably share it on his socials, right? Yeah. I'll put it again here. Yeah, yeah. I'll put yeah. The and then somewhere here in the video. Yeah, so that's my podcast. And then also just connect with me on Facebook. You know, you can I get a lot of requests. Net, but you can send me a request and you can follow me on Twitter as well at Lebo Ramakopa. So all of this is just all one big entity, if you get me. And she's a speaker. If you want to I'm invite a speaker her as to come well. and speak at your events. I'm a speaker. She's, she's, I'm a program director. I'm a facilitator. I'm, I'm a lot of things in one. But let's connect. And yes, uh, with everything that he was probing out of me, I'm going to discipline him after this. <laughs> <laughs> come and tell the people that we're going to continue next time. Come, come, come say bye-bye. She doesn't want to. She doesn't want. Anyways, ladies and gents, this is to be continued. We're going to come back. Please type on the comment section if you still want to know more about the juicy stuff because she was busy. I mean, right in her home, the little one is yeah, she didn't want the juicy to phone, stuff. she didn't want to say much. So, yeah, to be continued, <laughs> still going to have it again on the Miracle Perspective. Thank you so much. It was great. Till we meet again. Goodbye.